Hey everybody, uh, today what we're going to work through, you can see on the screen, is solving exponential equations and we're going to call this day one. What you're going to see, most of it, should be review from last year. So we're going to tackle it with the mindset that it is a review topic, but there's maybe some theory, absolutely some formatting that we're going to have to cover that may be new to you. Okay, I want to jump right in and start knocking out some exponential equations. Okay, here we go. So what you see on the screen right now are two exponential equations. I think that these would both fall into the category of straightforward, even with respect to review. What you're going to hear out of me today is an awful lot of repetition. It's going to be so repetitive that you're going to go, okay, Gray, I get it. Like, let's get over this. But I need you to have a focus of my intended goal. I need you to be comfortable to solve exponential equations when you're leaving this course. And a problem that can happen is that we segment our knowledge. What I mean by that is you're going to put some ideas together and you're not going to connect them to other areas. It's all going to work great for today because the only thing we're talking about today are exponential equations. And so you get this false sense of comfort, this false sense of understanding because you've segmented your knowledge. In order to avoid that, I'm going to be repetitive. That the goal I'm taking with this is I'm going to talk to you about how to solve exponential equations as if each one of these equations were jumbled up and mixed up with other types of equations. That way, you turn over the page, you see a big jumbled up page of equations, you are comfortable to solve exponential equations when it's not an isolated situation. Okay, I hope that's clear. But as I said, I'm going to be really repetitive with my language. Don't fast forward it. Don't ignore it. It's meaningful. Okay, let's jump into one. And we'll specifically tackle question A. So I turn over the page and I see that equation jumbled up with, with a bunch of other things. And the first question I should always be asking myself, where is the variable? It's always the question I ask myself. Normally, the variable's been in the base, and so we've gotten quite used to avoiding even asking that question. But that is a specific question I should ask at the beginning because it's going to give me an idea of what world I'm living in. So I take a peek at that equation, and I recognize my variable is up in the exponent. If my variable's in the exponent, I have an exponential equation, and therefore, I have a process to deal with that. So, my job with the variable and the exponent, I got to get it out. And the way I get it out, the best way, is to try to get a power equal to a power where the bases are the same. So, my eyes immediately go to the right side. I see 27. I now look back at my power, and I see it's a 3. And so, I need to figure out how can I write 27 as a power base 3. And luckily, I'm pretty comfortable to do that. I know that 27 is 3 to the exponent 3, 3 cubed. Well, now that I have a power equal to a power where the bases are the same, I have a piece of theory that I can rely on. Anytime I have a single power equal to a single power where my bases are the same, then I know that my exponents must be equal. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit in terms of what your solution needs to look like. I would have to see both of those gold lines every time. To be very clear, you can see a therefore statement at the front of my last line. That therefore statement is there because I used a piece of theory. That theory being, anytime I have a power equal to a power 
where the bases are the same, I know that my exponents must be equal. There is no operation that I can do to go from my power line to my exponent line. There's none. Please don't ever get caught saying, well, the bases drop out. The bases don't drop out. You can't drop out a base. And there's no, the, the bases divide out. No, they don't. If I tried to take three cubed and I divided it by three to eliminate the base, that gives me three squared. It doesn't eliminate a base. So what we are doing is we are using a piece of theory to only examine the exponent. That's all encompassed in that therefore statement. Okay, when we do that, you have to blindly copy out your exponents. If I have a power equal to a power and the bases are the same, then the exponents are equal. That must be shown. I have to see both gold lines. But after that, you can skip work. Like you'll notice that perhaps the first line in my solution afterwards may have been that. Okay, to get rid of a minus 5, I add 5. I don't have to see that line because to go from 2x minus 5 equals 3 to my blue line, all I did was an operation. And you can do as many operations as you want in your head as long as you're comfortable with it. They're just operations. If you want to show me the blue line, feel free to show me. But otherwise, you can jump straight down to x equals 4. In terms of a solution, I need to see the three gold lines. If you have those, then you have a perfect solution. If you show me extra, no problem. If you show me less, then we have a problem. Okay, I want you to take a look at B because I think that even with just that one review question on A, you could be good to work your way through B. So I want you to give it a shot on your own and then we'll come back and we'll see how we match up. I want you to pause the video now. Go ahead. No, okay, we're back. So we take a look, and the first question we ask ourselves, where is the variable? You recognize that your variable is up in the exponent. You got to get it out, which means you need a power equal to a power base the same. Now, you notice 256 over there, or 1 over 256, and you notice that you have to try to turn that into a power base 2. So, what a lot of us will do is start to think about, okay, is 256 a power base 2? And if you follow through with any of the guidelines I've given you, if you know 2 to the 5th off the top of your head, then you're good. Well, 2 to the 5th is 32. So, if I double that to 64, that's the 6th. If I double that, that's 120, that's the 7th. And if I double that, I get to the 8th that what we have on the right side would be 1 over 2 to the 8th. Now, I want to highlight, some of us are going to make a mistake right now because we're going to think we satisfied a power equal to a power base the same, and we did not. Look at the right side of my equal sign, and you will notice that my right side is not a power base 2. It's 1 divided by a power base 2, which means it's not a single power. So we need to figure out how to write that as a single power. And we should be comfortable to move that power across its fraction line. You know that to do that means the sign on the exponent must change. Now you take a look at that gold line. That gold line has a power equal to a power where the bases are the same, and therefore my exponents are equal. Similar to before, I have to see the two gold lines. You can skip the blue. Like, I hope you skip the blue. But like normal, feel free to add it if you wish. Okay, once we have that gold, now look what you just did. And this is something that you're going to find is going to be a pattern in everything we solve. 
The original equation I gave you in both A and B were exponential equations. You can see that they're exponential equations because where is the variable? It's up in the exponent. But in both instances, what you ended up creating was a polynomial equation, like a linear equation, a quadratic equation, that for us to solve any of our equations, we're actually going to create linear ones or quadratic ones, polynomial ones. Okay, we should be super fast to finish off the equation in B. Okay, I can't collect my variables into one term. I'm going to look to see if I can factor, and I can. If I can't factor, then I'm stuck using quadratic formula. I get my two solutions, and you can now see a full solution for both A and B. Okay, I'm hoping that this is coming back to you relatively quick. First question we always ask, where's the variable? If it's up in the exponent, we got to get it out. That means we need a power equal to a power base the same. Okay, let's jump in. We're going to start moving a little quicker through some other examples. Okay, problem C, you can see up on the, the screen. I want you to give that one a shot on your own. I think it's a great one for us that now after two review problems, this one should be your check to see, okay, do you got a firm grasp of what we're talking about? So I want you to give this one a shot on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, we're back. So we take a peek. First thing we ask, where is the variable? And you see it up in the exponent. We got to get it out, which means we need powers of the same base. Pretty quickly, you can scan all of your denominators, 9, sorry, not denominators, bases, 9, 81, 27, and we should recognize that all of those numbers are powers base 3. So we may choose to include this line of you changing each one of those to a power base 3. You'll notice I'm not fully simplified. So once I fully simplify, my left side may look like that. I'm going to leave this in on the right side because I want to talk about a common mistake. So if we got that part, I think we're doing great. For me to solve this equation, I think that that gold line is a great first line. It avoids some risk for mistake. I think it's a good first line. Okay, here comes your common mistake as you check your solution. The left side I have as a single power. Perfect, that's what I'm trying to get. The right side isn't. So I need to simplify that right side to a power base 3. Here comes your common mistake. I'm going to bet and say that I would have a bunch of people who have that on their page. And that is wrong. I think the mistake we make here... It's an optics thing. I think it's like the way something looks, that it drives us to a mistake. That is that you may take a peek and you go, oh, look, like that 3 to the 4th times my 3 to the 3x. It's like you see this little multiplication symbol in between the powers. And so then you want to multiply those two powers, together, those two exponents together. And there's your mistake. We are multiplying the powers together, but that doesn't mean multiply the exponents. You guys all passed grade 9, which means you know your laws of exponents. And so our common mistake then in terms of writing that 12x was us goofing up our laws of exponents. Again, I don't think you, you goofed up on your law of exponents. I think it was an optics thing. You saw something that wasn't really there. So... I'm hoping that we see multiplying powers of the same base, add the exponents, and we're good. Hopefully you have that. You now have a power equal to a power, base the same, therefore your exponents are equal. And now feel free to skip as many steps as you want. You can work your way down to getting an answer of 2. So I would need to see the gold lines. 
And I think that that first gold line is a great first line for you. So hopefully we matched up and things look great. Okay, I want to jump into D. I think D for right now is your trap question. And it's a question that's going to give you a false sense of comfort. The reason I say that is that there are a lot of things you may do on D, or I guess a few things you could try. And you may be motivated to do something because of the day we're on. And I want to make sure that you don't get a little too cocky with it because as we progress throughout our unit, stuff's going to get a little more jumbled and you're going to lose some checks that you may be using to not make a mistake. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, this is your only bad mistake. I want you to try D, but I want you to stop after the first line. I'm not going to let you go too far in the wrong direction, but just stop after the first line. We'll make sure we match up. Okay, pause it now. Now, okay, we're back. So as I said, here comes your big mistake. If you have this on your page right now, I would be a bit concerned. Not like big picture concern, but we missed a really big idea. That's incorrect. And I would argue we should know that's incorrect since we all passed grade six. Because you remember your order of operations and you know that you cannot do multiply before exponent. And so when you multiplied your bases together, there's your mistake. You can't do that. Now, I will have some of you that are going to be a little too cocky and you're going to go, yeah, but I wouldn't have done that. Like, I didn't do that. And I need you to be clear on why you didn't. I would have had some people that didn't do that because they looked at the power base 10 that would have resulted and said, I can't turn that into a power base 40. So it demotivated you from multiplying those bases together, which allowed you to avoid the mistake. But it wasn't for good reason. The thing I need you to be conscious of, in about three days' time, we're going to solve that green equation that you see on the screen right now. You are going to learn how to solve that green equation. So... You can't use being able to write a number as a power of a base of another number as your check or your motivator for what to do to solve. You can't. Numbers are going to get ugly pretty quick. So let's make sure that we understand that we cannot multiply 5 times that power base 2 because of bed mass and not the outcome of the numbers involved. Okay. Let me erase that off the screen. We know that that's such a bad decision. Instead, if we take a look at the equation that was given and you see that you've got five times a power and you know the variable is up in the exponent, so you have to deal with the exponent first, then the five becomes a problem you want to get rid of. Well, how do you get rid of times by five? Well, you divide by five. You may choose to put this line down. But I think we're better than that. That when you recognize that the variable's up in the exponent, you got to get it out, which means you need a power equal to a power with the base the same. You should be motivated that when you divide out that 5, you want this right side to be a power base 2. So just choose how to write 8 in the most useful form possible. Like, I didn't do any extra operations. Just rather than writing 8 in standard form, I wrote it as a power. Because now I can say, since I have a power base 2 equal to a power base 2, then I know the exponents must be equal. And now, skip as many steps as you like. You get down to your solution. So, I need to see the gold. Please feel free to skip over that blue. Okay, hopefully we matched up. And this is where we're going to now kind of take a turn with some stuff. So you guys, you guys are going to deal with some problems where you can work your way through. We can use them as checks. 
and I'm going to throw some doozies at you. Okay, here we go. You take a look at problem E. Problem E would have been a doozy for you. Like this would have been a stumper. In fact, so much so that you may never have seen problem E before. This one may be new to you. Okay, I am going to address problem E as if you have never seen it before. So we're going to walk through this one together. Okay, first thing you look at, where is your variable? You notice it's up in your exponent. You have to get it out, which means you need a power equal to a power base the same. Well, you take a look and you notice that you've got a power base 2, a power base 2. Well, 32 is a power base 2. It's just this 33 that seems to be the problem because I can't write that as a power base 2. Maybe given the problem we just went through, you start to look and go like, hey, 40 wasn't a power base 2. Neither was 5. Maybe I can divide something out. Well, if you start to scan that, that becomes a problem because any way you try to divide out the 33, you're going to have to divide it from every term. We're not really getting rid of the 33. Okay. What makes this problem different than every other problem we've dealt with? Specifically, I'm going to circle it in pink. The problem is we have add and subtract. What I want you to do is just scan back over the four problems we've done to this point, and you'll notice the only operations that we had with powers were multiply or divide. There was never a time where we were trying to add a power to a power. Take a look at problem D. It was five times a power. It wasn't five plus a power. So this add or subtract causes a wrinkle. It's a snag. It's a problem we got to get through. Well, if we kind of keep in mind that we were fine any time we had multiply or divide, then my argument to you would be figure out a way to write that equation in E where it includes multiply or divide. So my focus to you is going to be, let's zero in on the multiply. How can you write an expression that has add or subtract in it as multiply? And I'm hoping that maybe it comes back to you. What we're talking about is factoring. Every time you factor an expression, you are breaking it up into multiply. So we're going to take a peek at that equation, and we're going to actually see it's an equation you've been dealing with a lot since grade 10. Okay, I'm going to put a line in just so we can recognize something. I'm hoping that by me writing this one line in and changing the way the first power looks, that you may see that blue and recognize, hey, that's an expression I have factored hundreds of times. Okay, maybe we can't see it. Maybe we can't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an extra process. I'm going to use the process of substitution. You never have to do this, but I think it might make the relationship jump out at us. What if I said that I was going to let this 2 to the x expression that shows up twice in that expression be represented by something that's simpler, like just a? Then what that blue expression becomes is a squared minus 33a plus 32 equals zero. And I'm hoping that now that's screaming at you, hey, we just have a simple trinomial. We can factor that. Two numbers of multiply to give 32, add to give 33. Okay, why does that relationship pop up? Can I get you to look back at the blue equation? The parts that I circled represent somethings, right? Two to the X is something. And if we scan our way across that blue expression, then you have something squared 
minus single somethings and a constant, you have your quadratic equation. Now, look back at the green. We should be good to be able to factor that into an a minus 32 and an a minus 1. You may then solve that as saying, well, then, therefore, a equals 32 or 1. But you'll notice I never gave you an equation that had a's in it. Like you, figuratively speaking, you chose to put in those a's. So now I would have to go backwards and re-substitute and therefore replace my A with what it was equal to to now get back to the expressions that we were asked to deal with. Can you take a look at my last blue line? And do you notice you just built the most simple exponential equations? We could solve each one of those. So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to skip over all that green. That is, I want to skip over all the substitution. You can always use it if you wish, but I want us to be more efficient than that. So I'm going to erase all of that green. Hopefully, now that we see that that blue is just a hidden quadratic equation. Okay, what would it look like for like minimum steps for us? So you take a peek at it, and you see that you have something squared, a single something, and a constant. So we are looking for two numbers that multiply to give 32 and add to give negative 33. Okay, we come up with negative 32 and negative 1. So for us to factor that, we know we're going to get binomials being multiplied together. For you to factor it, you would say, what was the single something or what was the squared something? And then we have our negative 32 and negative 1. You could give me that gold line as your very first line in your solution. You have factored the original equation. Now, okay, this line that I'm going to write down in blue... I want you to skip it just because you're going to get enough experience knowing where you're going. You could blindly now write, therefore, 2 to the x equals 32 or 2 to the x equals 1. But look what you just built, an exponential equation. How do we solve that? You need to get a power equal to a power base the same which means you're now going to have to include the next line writing 32 and 1 as powers base 2. Skip it. Skip it. If we can already foresee that our next line is going to give us a quadratic equation, then why not write 32 in the most useful form? Now you've already written a power equal to a power base the same. Therefore, the exponents are equal. You get to write down one last line. Nice. Or 2 to the x equals 1. Now, this one you see in blue or now my gold can sometimes cause you guys a bit of a snag. Because you start looking at it going, oh, I can't put an exponent on 2 to give me 1. Oh, I hate when 1. You should love when 1 show up. Because you can write 1 as in a, a power base anything. Just put the exponent 0 on it. Or I should say almost anything. Now that we have that, therefore x equals 0. And you have a complete solution. Okay. A gold solution is all I would have to see. There's minimum steps. I think you should try to practice that. However... Feel free to include the blues if you need to or include the blues up until the point where you feel confident to not write it anymore. I want you to take a look at the whole solution now in its entirety. Remember, we're not trying to segment our knowledge. You take a look back up at the original equation. What made this equation different? It's that you had the add or subtract powers. 
We have a problem with adding and subtracting powers. We don't have laws of exponents that help us to simplify that. So we wanted to eliminate our add or subtract. What did that drive us to do? Change it into multiply, which means factor. Okay, I want to keep adding in some new stuff. Here we go. Okay, you take a look at F now. Question F is one that you should have had experience with. So I'm backtracking to this one a little bit. But I want to highlight some mistake that you make. Okay, first thing, process. Where's my variable? It's up in the exponent. I got to get it out, which means I need a power equal to a power base the same. My eyes then go to, wait a second, I'm subtracting powers. If I'm adding or subtracting, oh, this is going to be one of those factor problems. I'm going to need to factor to put my multiply back in. Except we may start to try to factor this expression in an incorrect way. We may start to treat this like, oh, okay, so 2 to the x plus 2 minus 2 to the x. I'm going to bring that 48 over so now I can look to factor. And now I'm trying to go two numbers to multiply to give 48, add to give two. Hey, eight and six. And I need to stop you because there's one huge difference in problem F than problem E. Look back to your problem E and notice that your equation started in problem E with... So you take a peek... Your exponent was 2x. That's no problem because if we have a power raised to another exponent, then we multiply those exponents. x times 2, 2x, we're good. Okay, I want you to take a look up now at the equation I gave you in f and notice you don't have multiply in your exponent. You have adding, addition. This isn't a quadratic. Your first power does not represent something squared. Oh, shoot. I'm going to erase all of that then because everything I was just trying to do doesn't represent the situation I'm in. So I'm going to put down a line just so you can see the difference. If I try to unsimplify my first power... It may look like this. When multiplying powers of the same base, I would add those exponents, and that gets me back to my x plus 2. You'll notice I don't have a squared power in my first term. I actually have the multiplication of powers. Okay, how does this change things for us in our goal to factor? Well, I'm going to write down that blue line one more time just so we can maybe see what we have sitting in front of us. If our goal is to factor, then let's go down our factoring checklist. What's the first thing you always look for? A common factor. Take a look on the left side of your equal sign. How many terms do we have? We have two. Is there a common factor between those two terms? Yes. A 2 to the exponent x. So if we were to factor out the common factor, then we could common factor out a 2 to the x. Okay, what does that leave you from the first term? Well, it leaves you with your 2 squared. What does that leave you with the second term? Well, I'm factoring the whole thing out, so it leaves me with a 1. And maybe you come in on that gold line, and you've now factored. Okay, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but you just cured your problem. Take a look at everything you have inside those brackets, and you'll notice there's no variable in there. 
that means that's just a constant. So calculate it. Calculate it. It's attached by multiply. So once you know what number that is, divide it out. Okay, I want to go back to the very beginning though, and I want to get rid of that blue line, and I want to talk about the most efficient way to factor this as we go. Okay, I'm starting from the beginning. Repetitive, remember. Here we go. Okay, I have to solve the equation. First thing I look for, where's my variable? It's up in the exponent. I got to get it out. I need a power equal to a power base the same. I notice I have subtraction in between powers though, which means I'm going to need to factor. I got to put the multiply back in. So now I look up in the exponent and I notice I have adding in my exponent. So I'm going to look to common factor. Okay, what do I have in common in both terms? Well, I have a 2 to the x in both terms. I'm going to factor that out. Now, you could go through the process of common factoring by dividing out your common factor. But I think for most of us, it's actually going to be easier to reverse multiply. So what I mean is 2 to the x times what would get me back to my original first term, 2 to the x plus 2. I'm hoping that we can look at that and we would say, well, if I'm going to change my exponent when I multiply, then that means... I need to have a power of the same base, 2. Well, if I'm multiplying powers of the same base, that means I add the exponents. What do I add to x to get me to x plus 2? Duh, 2. And you can do a quick check and follow the green arrow and see that you would get back to 2 to the x plus 2. Now we do the same thing. What would I multiply 2 to the x by that gets me back to 2 to the x. Well, 1. I'd multiply it by 1 because it is itself. Okay. Since it was a minus in between, then there's my 1. I think reverse multiplying is the easiest way to determine that next factor. Okay, let's finish off the problem. Now that you have that, well, we've got our 2 to the x... Inside the brackets, I got 4 squared minus 1. That's a 3. And if you take a peek at that, you'll notice that that equation looks an awful lot like equation D. You have a constant times a power with the variable in the exponent equal to another constant. This should be so fast to finish off. To get rid of the times by 3... Divide out of 3. Well, 48 divided by 3 is 16, but I don't want to write 16. I already see that I want a power base 2. So I'm going to write 16 as 2 to the 4th. Because now I have a power equal to a power base the same, and therefore my exponents are equal. Nice. Okay, you take a look at question E and F, and you'll notice we have two types of equations that require different factoring methods. One factoring as a quadratic, the other common factoring. How can I tell the two apart? The operations in the exponent. Okay, pretty soon I'm going to leave up like a practice quiz for you. But I want to leave two problems with you that I think we're going to take a step back on and you should have the means to be able to work your way through pretty easily to solve. Okay, these two are a means of a check for us. So let's use them just like that. Okay, you take a look at G and H on the screen, and I want you to go as fast as you can through those two problems. The reason why I'm throwing those up is more about how do you present your solution? There's a couple different approaches. Which approach did you take? Not that they're challenging problems. I think you should be comfortable to solve both of those. So I want you to pause the video and solve both of them and then let's come back and check. Okay, pause it now. Okay, we're back. So if I take a look at G, where's my variable? It's up in the exponent. I got to get it out, which means I need power equal to power base the same. I notice I got 9 and 27. 
those can both be powers base 3. Hopefully we recognize 9 is 3 squared, so I can expand that 2 from the squared into my exponent. We can do the same thing on the right side, 27 is 3 cubed. I love that as a first line. I think you're terribly efficient with that as your first line. Now that you have a power to power base the same, your exponents are equal. I will have had a bunch of people that would have chosen to solve equation G by making left side and right side both be powers base 3, not 1 third. No problem. You're going to get the same thing as me, except you'll have opposite signs on both sides. We can go through and solve. So X gives you negative 5, and you should be good. Hopefully we match up. Everything's good. You're feeling confident. If we had a hiccup on G, then I want you to pause the video and analyze your solution on H. Give it a check. See if we made any similar mistakes. If you did not attempt H, come on, give it a go. Pause the video now and try. Okay? Otherwise, we're going through a solution on H. Okay, where's my variable? It's in the exponent. I got to get it out. I need a power to power base the same. You take a peek. My bases are 4, 8, 16. Those are all powers base 2. I'm going to write all of those as powers base 2. My first line would look like this. I took my time, 8, 2 cubed, expanded in, 4, 2 squared, expanded in, 16, 2 to the 4th, expanded in. Here's where we may differ now. Depending on what you see on the screen, we could take one of two paths. That is, I will have a bunch of people that will say, on the left side of my equal sign, I'm going to simplify that. And so I'm dividing powers at the same base, which means I am now going to go through and subtract my exponents. So on the left side, I'm going to get 3x minus 2x, which is x. 6 minus 6 cancels out. And you come in on that equation. You now have a power equal to power base the same. Therefore, your exponents are equal. Make sure your therefores are in the right spots. And you get 12 equals 3x and x equals 4. Hopefully we match up. Things look great. But I would have had a bunch of other people that didn't like the divide by. And maybe you've built up some experience over the years of getting rid of divide bys by multiplying out. And so maybe what you did was you didn't like the divide by 2 to the x plus 6 sorry, 2 to the exponent 2x plus 6. And instead, you chose to multiply that out to the right side. Well, you're multiplying powers of the same base, so we have to add those exponents. And you came in on that line. Now you have a power equal to a power where the bases are the same, so your exponents are equal. And maybe you jump in And we get to there. So I think everybody should have had the green. We had some options. Maybe you went down the pink pathway or maybe you took the orange. Both are good. Look, they're about the same level of efficiency in terms of number of steps, what you need to show. Hopefully question G and H went well and you're feeling confident moving forward. Okay, last part. I want you to take a look at what's on the screen right now, and I want you to treat that like it's a practice quiz. I think what I've given to you is in a jumbled up nature, like it's not, it doesn't progress in difficulty. So we got some difficult ones, we got some straightforward, we got some doozies. My advice to you, work your way through I and N and see how well it goes. I'm going to post solutions to those. I'm not walking you through them. But those should give you an indication of how well and how comfortable you are with solving exponential equations. As I said at the very beginning, most of what we saw today should have been review. Maybe there's a little bit of things to consider with regards to the factoring ones. And maybe there's a way that we're looking at it that we didn't look at it last year. 
Your job, try those six you see on the screen, use them as a gauge, and then after that, get as much practice as you can and make it be automatic for us. Okay, jump into your practice. Jump into, I guess, these six first. Best of luck.